the monster of Maple Street. In the small, sleepy town of Maple Street, where every house bore the mark of decades past and the nights were as quiet as whispers, young Charlie Bennett faced a terror far removed from the idyllic calm of his surroundings. Every night, as the clock struck nine and the lights in his room dimmed to a soft glow, Charlie would hear it, the subtle yet unmistakable sound of something stirring beneath his bed. At first, Charlie convinced himself it was just the house settling, the creaks and groans of old timber, a common soundtrack to his evenings. But as the nights passed, the noises grew more distinct, a low, rasping breath that seemed to suck the warmth from the air, followed by a soft, dragging movement, like the scrape of claws against the wooden floorboards. Terrified, Charlie confided in his parents, who listened with patient smiles and reassurances that there were no such things as monsters. It was just his imagination, they said, a phase that would pass. But their words did little to quell the fear that clutched at Charlie's heart each night as he lay in bed, eyes wide open, staring into the darkness. One night, driven by a mix of fear and a desperate need for proof, Charlie mustered all his courage and decided to confront whatever lay hidden beneath his bed. Armed with a flashlight, he waited for the sounds to begin, his heart pounding in his chest. As the familiar rasping breath filled the room, Charlie took a deep breath, counted to three, and quickly flicked on the flashlight, pointing it into the abyss below his bed. For a moment, all he could see was dust and the forgotten detritus of childhood. But then, something moved. A flash of movement in the beam of light, too quick to be seen clearly, yet undeniably real. Charlie gasped, his breath catching in his throat as he caught sight of it. There, lurking in the shadows, was a pair of glowing, malevolent eyes and a grin that revealed sharp, jagged teeth, the unmistakable features of a monster. Frozen with fear, Charlie could only watch as the creature began to emerge, its form grotesque and terrifying, a nightmare come to life. Just as he was about to scream for help, the creature spoke in a voice that was low and chilling, yet tinged with sadness. I mean you no harm, it said, its eyes softening in the light. I am trapped, bound to the shadows of this room, by a curse long forgotten. I am as much a prisoner as you are frightened. Charlie, though still scared, felt a pang of sympathy for the creature. It spoke of loneliness and a yearning for freedom, emotions that resonated with the young boy. A silent understanding formed between them, a bond forged in the quiet of the night. The creature told Charlie of the ancient magic that bound it to the room, and of the simple act of kindness that could break the curse. All it required was a belief in the impossible and a willingness to see beyond the fear. And so, Charlie, with a courage he never knew he had, agreed to help. He listened carefully to the creature's instructions, embarking on a quest that would take him beyond the confines of his room, into the depths of ancient lore and magic hidden within the heart of Maple Street. As dawn approached and the first light of morning crept into Charlie's room, the bond between the boy and the monster under his bed had grown into an unlikely friendship, their fates intertwined in the quest to break the curse. But as the sun rose higher, casting light into the darkest corners of the room, Charlie turned to find... The Long Walk Home Joshua had always enjoyed his walks home from school, a time to let his imagination roam as freely as his steps. The path took him through a quiet, wooded area on the outskirts of town, a shortcut known only to a few. But as autumn's grip turned the leaves to shades of fire and gold, a deep unease began to settle over him. Whispers among his classmates spoke of a shadowy figure seen lurking among the trees, a presence that seemed both less and more than human. One crisp afternoon, as Joshua set off on his walk home, the sky prematurely darkened, a blanket of clouds smothering the sun. The woods, usually a place of solace, felt different, 
the silence oppressive, as if holding its breath. Joshua quickened his pace, the echoes of his footsteps a stark reminder of his solitude. That's when he heard it, the rustle of leaves behind him, subtle yet deliberate. Glancing back, he caught a glimpse of something moving through the trees, a flash of darkness that seemed to flicker in and out of existence. Panic surged through him, his heart pounding in his chest as he realized he was being followed. Joshua ran, the woods blurring into a tunnel of fear and adrenaline. The thing behind him kept pace, its movement silent but for the occasional snap of a twig, a constant reminder of its pursuit. Joshua dared not look back, fearing what he might see, focusing only on the path ahead and the promise of safety. The chase seemed to stretch on forever, time distorting under the weight of his terror. But eventually, the trees began to thin, the edge of the woods and the outskirts of town coming into view. Bolstered by the sight of familiar houses, Joshua pushed himself harder, bursting from the tree line and onto the street. He didn't stop running until he reached his front door, slamming it shut behind him and leaning against it, gasping for breath. Safe in the confines of his home, the terror of the woods felt like a world away. Yet, when he peered out the living room window, heart still racing, he saw it, a shadow among the trees at the edge of the woods, motionless and watching. Joshua's walks home through the woods came to an end that day. The shortcut, abandoned for the longer, safer route along the town's streets. But the memory of the chase lingered, a haunting reminder of the fear that had gripped him. And sometimes, when the light faded early and the shadows grew long, Joshua would glance towards the woods and wonder about the nature of the figure that had pursued him. Was it merely a trick of the light and his imagination? Or had something ancient and malevolent awakened in the woods of his quiet town? The answer remained elusive, the mystery unsolved, leaving Joshua to ponder the shadows and what might lurk within them, always half expecting to see the dark figure reappear, its intentions as unknown as the path it had chased him from. The Whispering Woods Eli, an adventurous boy with a wild imagination, had always been drawn to the mysteries of the great outdoors. So, when his family suggested a weekend camping trip to Silver Pine Forest, he was the first to pack his bag, buzzing with excitement at the thought of nights under the stars and days exploring the untamed wilderness. The family set up camp in a clearing, surrounded by ancient pines that stretched skyward, their branches whispering secrets to the wind. As dusk fell on their first night, the campfire's glow cast flickering shadows across the canvas of their tent, creating a cozy sanctuary against the creeping chill of the forest. But as the night deepened, and Eli lay wrapped in his sleeping bag, the comforting crackle of the fire outside gave way to an eerie silence. The whispers of the forest ceased, and a heavy, oppressive stillness settled over the campsite. It was then Eli heard it, a low, guttural growl so faint he thought he might have imagined it. Curiosity overcoming his fear, Eli quietly unzipped the tent and peered out into the darkness. The fire had died down to embers, casting little light into the surrounding woods. Mm, but there, on the edge of the clearing, stood a figure so grotesque and out of place that Eli's breath caught in his throat. It was tall and hunched, its skin the color of the moonless night, with eyes that glowed red in the darkness. Long, clawed fingers hung at its sides, and it stood perfectly still, as if it were observing Eli just as intently as he was observing it. Frozen in fear, Eli wanted to scream for his parents, to warn them of the creature that lurked just beyond the light of their dying fire. But the sound caught in his throat, a silent cry of terror. The creature tilted its head, as if curious, and then, with a grace that belied its monstrous form, it stepped back into the shadows and disappeared. Eli blinked, half convinced he had imagined the encounter, a trick of the shadows and his overactive imagination. Yet, the fear that clutched at his heart felt all too real. He retreated into the tent, zipping it shut with trembling hands. The next morning, under the bright light of day, Eli's tale was met with skepticism. His parents attributed his sighting to a dream, the product of too many ghost stories before bed. 
But Eli knew what he had seen was no figment of his imagination. Determined to prove it, he ventured to the edge of the clearing, searching for any sign of the creature from the night before. There, in the soft earth at the forest's edge, he found it. A set of tracks, too large and oddly shaped to belong to any animal he knew. Eli followed the tracks into the woods, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and excitement. The forest around him felt alive, watching as if it held its breath in anticipation. The tracks led deeper and deeper into the wilderness, to a part of the forest Eli had never seen before, where the trees grew so dense that little light reached the forest floor. It was there, in the heart of the whispering woods, that Eli found... Let us know what you thought of this story in the comments. Thank you for listening. Join us tomorrow at 9 a.m. EST for a new untold story. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more artificial apparitions.